Well, greetings, saints. Welcome to Chaplain Peter One on YouTube. You can also find me on Brighteon.com under Heavenly Glory. And my website is EternalValuesMinistries.com. Well, I hope you're all doing well. And I want to share a word with you here from the Lord. I was uh, praying about a week ago, October 2nd. Today is the, um, the 9th on the Monday, so last Monday, as I was praying, the Lord was uh, reminding me of the uh, flood in New York. And so I asked the Lord, I says, Lord, is this a natural occurrence or is this a judgment? And the Lord said, if I remove my hand of protection from a nation, people, or a city, Satan steps in to destroy. When I, the Lord, gave permission to Satan to destroy Job's business, kill his servants and children, he went forth to kill, steal, and destroy. It is his nature to harm the children of God. What you see in New York City is my hand of protection removed because of their sin. I will limit what the devil can do in my mercy, yet judgment must fall. My saints must repent of living, running with this world. They cannot serve two masters, for they will love one and hate the other. I will now take my hand of protection off many cities in America and around the world. You will witness the utter destruction Satan has planned, especially for them who love the Lord and live for him. This is your protection. Though I remove my protection from the cities, it will still be with the saints that fear me. Tell them that I love the Lord, whatever suffering they must endure is for their own good and perfection. All who seek me will be conformed to my image, including the suffering needed to perfect one. I also learned obedience by the things which I suffered as a man, even unto death, the death of the cross. Them who are so perfected will never be ashamed, but have boldness in the day of judgment. Praise the Lord. Never assume I, the Lord, am against the saint who lives in my presence. I chasten even the best so they will be even more holy. My perfection of the saints is ongoing throughout their entire lives. Heaven is filled uh, with them that I cause to suffer for my namesake. Amen. Them who endure will shine like the sun in righteousness forever. This is my promise to them who gave everything up, including their own lives, for the Lord's sake. I cannot help but to give them an inheritance so great it will eclipse any and all the sufferings they endured while on earth. Have hope, fear God, live righteously, love all, even the unlovely. I will soon settle the score for vengeance belongeth to the Lord, he says, I will repay. Amen. The Lord your protector, the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is what the Lord said to me when I asked him if, if what's going on with the flood in New York is um, something that naturally happens because the whole earth is under the, uh, the curse of the sin when Adam fell. The whole earth uh, is groaning and travailing in pain 
until the manifestations of the sons of God, uh, that's us, the resurrection. And so when Adam sinned, God told him, not everything's going to grow real nice, but you're going to get weeds, you're going to get thorns, and you're going to work the ground by the sweat of your face, and then you're going to die. Amen? It's appointed for a man to die once, physically, but then comes the judgment where we must give an account to God. And so, um, I hope you understand here what the Lord is saying. You know, the Bible tells us that judgment must start first in the house of God. And he says not to be marveled at, not to be surprised at the fiery trial that's about to take hold of the church. Because whoever he loves, he chastens. He chastens every son that comes to him. And if he doesn't chasten you, then you are illegitimate son of God. You're not real. And so, <clears throat> God wants to understand, and as I think about this, on October 7th, Saturday morning, I believe, an attack on Israel started. So we need to pray for the peace of Israel and to understand that, um, you know, if, if God removes his hand of protection on a nation, on a city, Satan's moving in, trouble's coming, but God is going to help the saint. And here's where we need to make sure we got our, our lives right with the Lord because the most beautiful thing you can have between you and God is a clean conscience between God and between men in this world. A clean conscience. And when our consciences are uh, defiled, when there's sin in our life, when we have guilt, because we're practicing sin. I'm talking to believers. Uh, it's hard to live that way, isn't it? And so we need to um, confess that sin, repent of it. And it says, if we confess our sins, the Lord is just and um, he's ready to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Amen. He says in James, confess your faults that's the word sins. Confess your faults one to another. It doesn't mean the confessional at the Catholic Church. <laughs> it means to God. Confess your faults one to another so that you may be healed. A lot of people are sick because they're holding grudges, unforgiveness, and things like that, and are tormented by devils because of um, unforgiveness, because we're, 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 we're in sin. Our conscience is not right. So we need to get our conscience right with God. And when all these troubles now, all this persecution is coming, you won't have to wonder, oh, is this God punishing me because of my sin? Walk with the Lord. Live for the Lord. There is no condemnation to them who walk in the Spirit, to them who live for Christ Jesus. But if you live after the flesh, there's condemnation. Amen? For the law of the spirit of life had made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen? So we need to fully trust the Lord, rely on the Lord for the things that are coming. Jesus said there's going to be wars and rumors of wars, but the end is not yet. Amen? He says, and then they're going to take you, put you in front of their courts, in front of their judges. And they're going to kill you. That's what Jesus said. And these are the beginning of sorrows. So we, we see what's going on. And, um, you know, we're, we're already in, uh, have one front in the world with um, Ukraine and uh, Russia. Now a second front starts opening up with um, Lebanon the Gaza Strip, the Palestinians, and maybe even Iran. This could escalate into something really big. So the Lord says, pray for the peace of Israel. Pray for the peace of Israel. God has a certain amount of people there in Israel, just like he has the Gentiles that are going to be saved. Amen? And they're going to have to go through the fire 
They're going to have to go through the tribulations of life and, and the tribulation is coming with the Antichrist and things that are happening right now in the beginning of this uh, times of sorrows. And it's like a woman having a baby. Her, uh, her pains start getting closer and closer together. She's coming closer to giving birth. And finally a child is born. Well, this time there's going to be something born and it's going to, it's going to be the mystery of iniquity, lawlessness. This is the direction we're going. So, uh, you know, Lord, help us get our lives right with you. Help us to, uh, to live for you, to repent of all sin, to walk close with you, to stay in your presence, my God, because these are going to be trying, trying times. Okay, saints, I love you, and the Lord loves you. God bless you. Till next time.